Hello, welcome to Anu's classroom. In this session, we are going to talk about data processing. So, we are uh, stepping into our block number 3 of MMPC3 with this particular session. Okay, so and in this throughout this video, we will be discussing about concepts like how we can edit the data, what is coding of data, how can we classify data, what is statistical series, how can we use tables as data presentation devices, how can we perform graphical presentations of data and things like that. Again, these are not new concepts. We have already learned about these things in our first semester, right? So first and foremost, let's get into it. Editing of data. So editing of data is actually the process of examining our raw data and detect errors or omissions and correct them if possible so as to ensure the completeness, consistency, accuracy and homogeneity of data. Like for example, uh, in some say for example you have a questionnaire in which it is asked uh, are you married or not, okay. In that they have written no and in the next question they were asking you what is the date of your marriage. Over there they have put some data. Now it is a problem, okay, when you, are, when you take your data to clean it you will see that now there is an er error. Either that person is married or he is not married, but the answers to two questions have conflict in them. So if it is possible, sometimes, most of the times, we should aim for getting in touch with the person who filled this data and confirm with them whether they are actually married or not or whether they made a misunderstanding and uh, they are not married and they put their date of birth in the date of marriage. Things like that could happen, okay? It could happen definitely. Not everybody is, uh, what you can say, not everybody is as free or concerned about our research than us, correct? So, that, so such things could happen. So, this is the process of editing of the data. So, as to ensure our data is complete, consistent and accurate, okay? So, or else like uh, things could be like, there are two mandatory questions, whether you are married or not and how many number of children do you have? So, in one place they wrote, no, they are not married and they left the question, uh, how many number of children you have as blank? So, we can pre-fill the data for them since we know they are not married, definitely. Uh, most cases, they'll have zero children, correct? So, editing can be done at two stages. One is field editing wherein we review the reporting forms uh, for completing or translating whatever was written in abbreviated form at the time of interviewing the respondent. Mm. Or we could have a central editing which is a type of editing which requires that all the forms are thoroughly edited by a single person in a small field study or a small group of persons in case of a large field study. Okay, So, that is editing of data. Next is the coding of data. Coding is the process of assigning say some symbols. It could either be alphabetical or numerical or it could be a combination of both to the answers so that the responses can be recorded into a limited number of classes or categories. Okay. And these classes should be appropriate to the research problem that are that is being studied also. They must be exhaustive and they must be mutually exclusive so that the answer can be placed in one and only one cell in a given category. Further, every class must be defined in terms of only one concept. Okay, like for example, in your school or even in this MBA, okay, we have coded the students into being in their semester 1, semester 2, semester 3, semester 4 and all, correct. In, class, in the schools, we had grade 1, 2, 3, up to 12, right. A person who is studying in grade 8 can only be in grade 8. They cannot be in grade 7 or 9, correct. So, that is the most simplest, I can say, example of, real life example of coding our data. Coding is necessary for the efficient analysis of our data as well. The coding decisions should usually be taken at the designing stage of the questionnaire itself so that the likely responses to the questions can be pre-coded. This simplifies our computer tabulation of data also for further analysis. How can we classify data? In its most simplest of terms, the process of arranging data in groups or classes on the basis of some characteristics is called classification of data. Classification will help us in making comparisons, drawing meaningful conclusions and it can be according to the attributes or according to certain numerical characteristics also of the data. In the case of classification according to attributes, the data could be classified by say descriptive things like their sex, caste, education or the amount of land they are holding and things like that. And when an individual observation processes numerical characteristics like say height, weight, marks and all, they are classified on the basis of class intervals which each will have an upper limit and a lower limit which is known as class limits. So, the difference between these two limits is called the magnitude of class or the class interval, correct? The, the difference between the lower limit and the upper limit. These are all things which we have already studied, correct? So, the next is what is statistical series? 
uh, statistical series is a series defined as a logical or a systematic arrangement of observations or items. When the attributes or things are counted, measured or weighed and arranged in an orderly manner, like say in a descending manner or ascending order, like age of people or height of people in ascending or descending order, then they will constitute a series. When the statistical data is pertaining to time, then it will be called as time series data or historical data. Like all the transactions that happen in bank, in your bank account will be ordered in the time based format in your bank account statement correct so that is a statistical series okay such kind of arrangement is a statistical series it is a time series data or you can also call it as historical data i hope that is clear to you guys this topic tables as data presentation devices is a uh, one of the favorite topics in term and examination i must say and you should know about it also how we can use tables i hope you all know about tables you must have seen it you must have drawn it right wherein uh, we tabulate things in a tabular format using excel and all right so statistically data can be presented in the form of say tables as well as graphs also and the classification of data is made with reference to say maybe the time or some other variables and this tabulation is used for summarization and condensation of data it aids in the analysis of relationships trends and other summarizations of the given data the tabulation may be either simple or even complex a few of the characteristics of a table you can say are first and foremost every table should have a very clear and concise title just above the body of the table so that we know the following table pertains to what if there is a table without any context that is any title you will not know what this table is talking about every table should also be given a very distinct number also so if you when you are preparing your uh, reports right for your project you will have a table of contents like that. You will have a table uh, of like uh, what you can say just like table of contents. You will have a list of tables and list of figures also. So there we will give say table number 1.1 and you will give the title and you will give the page number. So that 1.1 point, that one point one is the distinct number of that table. In your report there will not be two tables having the same number 1.1. 1. 1. Okay. So that is tables should be given a distinct number similarly every table should also have captions captions are nothing but your column headings and even stubs or row headings wherever possible the units of measurements must also always be indicated usually we put it along with the column heading if it is all on the same unit okay and abbreviations should be used to the minimum possible extent and the tables should be very much logical clear accurate and as simple as possible Sources or the source from which we have gathered the data in the table should also be indicated at the bottom of the table. Okay, explanatory footnotes if there are any concerning the table should also be given beneath the table along with the reference symbol and arrangement of data categories in a table must either be say chronologically or geographical or alphabetic or something like that or even time based or according to the magnitude or to, and all to facilitate for any particular comparison. And finally, table must suit the needs and requirements of the research study. Knowing these as the characteristics of a table, I want you to go and check any, any uh, book, okay? Even your MMPC course materials also look for any table and try to spot these um, various things that are related to a table in them, okay? Or you can go online, pick up any economic, uh, what you can say, economic survey page or something like that. Go to any table over there and you see... Um, a professionally created table will have all these characteristics in them okay so that is uh, talking about tables as data presentation devices next is uh, this is the final topic for this session graphical presentation of data so statistically data can be presented in the form of either tables or graphs or both right graphs are kind of like a visual representation of data i hope you remember our bar charts our histograms line charts all those things correct they are the graphs Several types of graphs or charts are used for presentation of statistical data, right? Like our bar chart, pictograms, pie charts, all those things. I hope you remember we had a little quiz while we were talking about those things in MMPC 5 as well, correct? To identify various types of uh, graphical charts properly with the, into their correct names also, right? So this is also a good enough, uh, what you can say, good topic. Uh, I would definitely ask you to brush up on these concepts. I'll leave a link to MMPC 5's playlist. You can go ahead and browse through topics uh, according to where you feel you are having a difficulty in grasping concepts, okay? Because um, it will help you a lot. 
uh, while you're writing term and examinations as well as writing your project everything it'll help okay so thank you so much for being with anu's classroom i hope these sessions are useful to you guys until i see you in the next session thank you so much take care bye bye